got Brad over here marking some of those spots that still need some welds. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm at the back of the, the flatty and I've got a couple things done to it. We put a D-ring on the rear, got a weld one on the front. I've been around welding like the shock mounts, things like that. Um, filling in welds where we haven't got, we just didn't get a chance to weld stuff in. So right now I'm working on the rear sway bar and we've got it mounted in the truck. And this is, if you guys remember the original sway bar that was in here when we were drifting with it. Um, so. It's right here. What I'm gonna do next is we're gonna pull a measurement from the sway bar to the axle after I get these sway bar mounts tacked in place. Probably like right here, honestly, somewhere in this area. And um, we find out exactly where the uh, axle droops at and then we can measure our bars right there and figure out how long they need to be so that whenever the suspension goes full droop, you know, drops down completely on a jump, the sway bars aren't holding the axle from dropping all the way, so. Yeah, we're gonna get this thing put up there and get it figured out. So guys, what we were gonna do is with the sway bar back here was reuse was my bed? No. Was reuse the old ladder bars that were on the truck um, with our new Himes, but the tubing is different. I guess the Himes were a different older style or something like that. So tomorrow we're gonna go back to Stewart to get the correct size tubing and do it the right way. So sway bar mounted we've got all the bar length measured out for what we know what we need what was it 31 inches i think mm -hmm. so we need 30 or 31 inch overall for eye to eye is what we're gonna have to have so that's what we gotta have for the sway bar i'm gonna finish getting these shock brackets welded up and then um weld the frame up some more and then we'll move on to figuring out some other things we can do uh once it gets dark so we run out of daylight so maybe we'll go to roll and get that toolbox and start building the inside of the toolbox it's gonna hold our battery and all that good stuff so let me get back to welding. So up here in the front of the truck, I'm currently removing all the things we don't need, like cruise control. Um, I ripped out the front brake line that goes from the driver's side to the passenger side. So we're only going to be using one brake line right here for the rear, or that's for the front, that's for the rear. Um, so we have one caliper on the front axle, one caliper on the rear axle, well, actually on the pinion. So got all that ripped out, got all the vacuum lines for the four wheel drive we're not using. Right here I'm working on pulling the uh, vacuum actuator for the cruise control out of this thing. Should be. Yep, that's it right there. Just got one vacuum hose that hooks to it. That probably why cruise hasn't never worked in this thing. I've been trying to figure it out. Got a hole in it. Hmm. Maybe we should hook cruise back up for the mega truck. Well, we can't use that one anymore. So that's that one for sure. Cruising. Engine harness. That can be laid out of the way. More engine harness stuff. More fuel lines. We're going to have to modify the engine harness to lay over the uh, factory stuff or the other harness that we were getting from. Uh, my buddy Jeremy Gray at Gray's Performance, he is sending um, us everything we need to put the common rail in here. So, right there. Um, up here next, I'm going to pull the battery cable off. Aaron, you'll grab me a 13 millimeter socket and an impact. So I'm up here trying to figure out how I've got wired stuff wired. It's been like a year since I played with the truck. And I remember now I had the nitrous wired into the horn wires, which is right here. So this guy's all relaying everything. Yeah, that is how I got it wired. So I think I'm going to leave it wired like that. We are going to be hooking nitrous up. I'm not taking the nitrous solenoid off the truck. Uh, we're going to have nitrous hooked up for the new engine. So, and boost pressure sensor there. That should be everything for the battery cable. Well, we got one big giant plug for something here. What the heck that's for? Let's see. Is there a razor blade? I don't have one out here, I don't think. Yep, here we go. Old battery cable. Yeet. 
or Brad came up with a new word, yoink. Whatever the hell that means. But that's Brad for you. Well, Brad, what does it mean? What? Yoink. Like grabbing something? Yoink? <laughs> <laughs> so incredibly, just ridiculously retarded. I'm about to yoink off this truck when I'm careful. <laughs> Need this still? Um, maybe not. Yes or no? Not right now. Yoink. <coughs> <laughs> I did. Well, you know what? Since there's no more vacuum pump on this motor, I gotta put a little vacuum, a little electric vacuum pump for the AC to work. AC? We don't need AC here in Florida. Said nobody that's, ever. I was about to say, that's the most <laughs> light redundancy. What's that? The AC in the fire truck is a little fan like on school buses. And the so heater is stuck new, on. Brad is the master sweeper upper here at Will's Distracted. <laughs> so we're about to put Brad to sweeper upper in in a second. <laughs> I ain't pushed for him here in like 10 years. <laughs> Power wire, starter wire. Okay. <laughs> Bruce, get it right. <laughs> there, that's a nice impact. Yeet. <laughs> Warranty. Alright, I think I've got pretty much everything that I can remove out of here I'm not going to use anymore. You don't want to eat it down? <laughs> we have a lot of work to do in two weeks. So in the process of getting our thumbnail, I spilled diesel on the ground. <laughs> Brian, you gonna get that sending unit out of there? Or the sump? Maybe one day. Maybe one day. So another good news, I did strike a deal with Move Bumpers guys. Uh, they're sending me a full bumper. Oh, we got crap all over the screen. Looks like doo doo. Hang on. There we go. Anyway, so you're spilling it everywhere. Oh, yeah. Show them what your mess is. No, that's okay. So, yeah. anyways, Move Bumpers <laughs> is sending me a full classic style front bumper. We're gonna be putting on the front of this bad girl. Should look pretty sick. Uh, hopefully, we'll have it this coming week sometime. Tomorrow, Aaron and I are going over to. Uh, FTI transmissions, transfer case, stuff like with sniper transfer case, I think it's called. And we're gonna see them build our transfer case and pick ours up tomorrow. So that's really exciting. So uh, we're gonna clean up here, run to Rural King right quick and find a toolbox. And then I've got the factory shifter boot and stuff right here out of the truck. I'm gonna make a copy out of the bottom uh, pattern with cardboard. And I've got a nice brand new piece of aluminum that I'm gonna drill out and rivet to the floor, cover up that hole and seal it with some silicone to uh, Try to get a little bit of a seal out of the truck cab. We'll see. Let's get everything cleaned up. All right, guys, we made it back to the shop after running a roll key, and we spent some dollars there. You can see a brand new uh, glass mat battery down there. Brand new powder coated Delta Champion Gear Lock Toolbox. It does have a slight dent, so we got it for $50 off. So, not a bad deal there. And I got tons of stuff we got in from Amazon. I showed you guys in the last video, not the drill bits, we got those. But um, just to start off, we've got a battery tender. It's a Schumacher uh, 1.5 amp, uh, amp maintainer. And what we're going to do with this is we have a battery inside the toolbox, and it's a glass mask. So there's no acid in it or anything like Well, there might be acid in it. I don't know. But it doesn't need to breathe or leak or anything like that. So we have the battery in the toolbox. We have two batteries up in the front of the truck. So we've got this maintainer. I'm going to wire into the battery inside the toolbox and have a plug here. So that just like we plug your truck in to heat at night, we're going to plug the mega truck in every night so that it can stay charged up either the day after we come out from mudding all day or still an event or just in general while it's parked and we're not playing with it, it can stay plugged in and the battery stay charged up. Uh, because as a lot of you may or may not know, 
Um, <clears throat> mega trucks use a ton of electricity on them from running stereos to just sitting there idling, uh, all kinds of good stuff. And everybody's got their phones plugged into them, uh, cameras on them, stuff like that. So I've also got a 2000 watt power inverter. We're gonna wire up inside the box also. This toolbox, um, every hallway drill is gonna have a grommet in it and um, be as sealed as possible on the silicone and everything. And it's got a seal on top of it. Um, it's a double walled toolbox so that when people do stand on it, it's not gonna be caving in and it'll keep that seal. So we keep all these electronics um, sealed up and clean as possible. So we're not gonna have a power problem on the truck when we do go to put the stout sound system in it from wet sounds and all that good stuff. So uh, we got our battery down there. We're gonna start marking out measurements and my fuel cells also are gonna go in here um, also. So I know some of you are probably not gonna like the idea of having a battery and electronics and fuel all in one, can, one area, but everything will be sealed up. Uh, vented properly and there won't be any problems with what we've got going on here. So uh, I guess I need to start making some measurements. Um, I know outside of putting a 20 gallon or a 15 gallon fuel cell inside of it. Um, yeah, and uh, go from there. All right guys, so what I'm doing here is I've got our battery tray in here off in the corner like we talked about and I'm actually riveting it to the floor and the reason we're riveting it is because I don't want to uh, have the bolt sticking out of the bottom of it because we're gonna have rubber on the bottom between the toolbox and the flatbed. So um, I had to put washers on there for it to work. So okay, so now that I got that battery holder down in there, get this battery set in it and uh, try to get some of our measurements figured out. We'll of course take the battery, um, probably have the box where we go to set it on the truck just because it's so freaking heavy. But uh, there's that, and I've got brand new battery holder downer thingies over here from Rural King. They spent a lot of money there. You guys have it. It was eight hundred fifty dollars later. It was enough, yeah. So we're gonna have eight hundred fifty dollars in this little toolbox full of gadgets, not including all the gadgets in it. All right. So this we got our battery held down, so we ain't flopping around here when we're smashing jumps and running over cars and driving through people's RVs. And for all the people at the mud Coming event, soon. we will be bolting it down. Yes. <laughs> all right. You definitely need to trim these things down a little bit. Yeah. We need a permanent marker somewhere. Do you know where it's at? Nope. Bradford? Yep. You had it, had it but the problem was... Oh, you set it down. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's trim these babies down some so we're not... Ripping people's arms off and stuff. Yep, looks about right. Who knows? Oops. Washer, wing nut. After all the hassle I'm going through to just test fit, this thing might just be permanently in there. <laughs> oh. Yep, permanently we, in there. It falls right out. It done did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that supposed to be a hook? I don't know. <laughs> it's supposed to be a hook. Whatever. Ain't going nowhere right now. It will after one jump. There it is. One battery El Heldo El Downo. Battery mounted, check. Now under the other 953 million things we have to do. Up next, we've got a $60 power inverter. Probably gonna burn the whole truck down one day, but uh, 2000 watt, like I mentioned a little bit ago. And I went ahead and took the liberty of cutting off the gator clamps because these are just made so you can hook it onto a battery like temporarily. And uh, we're gonna put some connectors on the end of these, similar to those, but they're this right size for our battery. And uh, to where this thing is straight wired to the battery all the time. 
Um, and I, like I have been doing, um, you guys probably know by now, I don't like to bolt things or have like holes sticking through the side of the toolbox. So uh, I did, me and Brad decided we're not gonna put the fuel cell in the box. We're just gonna mount it on the flatbed. Then we'll go ahead and put the water tank in here. So we can fill the toolbox up full of water and connect the battery and ground everything out. It'll be perfect. I can see it now. Water tank starts to leak, battery is right next to it. So and the probably put the inverter. Fire. The inverter needs to be somewhere on and off. So maybe somewhere down here where we can see what's going on. Well, I guess it needs to go like that. So yeah, I guess right there wouldn't be a bad spot. What do you think, Brad? That's Run the cool. wires right to there and then we can plug stuff in. Nope. Not today, Sonny. Oh, it's actually, it's there. Barely. Oh, it's there though. <laughs> okay. So over here what I'm mounting now is our USB plug and stuff like that. You'll see in just a moment what I'm getting at here, but mount the outer part. The Brad, smart man he is, so just punch holes just in the middle of it there, Bruce. And it's like, whoa. Well, all righty then. Okay. So, we need a couple more. Brad, you need a funny name for these. What? Doinkers? Squeezy seals? Or squeeze and tights? Squeezy tights. <laughs> that one stayed. Well, if those squeezy tights break off like that. That's... Where are those um, hole saws at? Are they outside still on the bench? Huh? The ones the we just bought. Socket. It's, oh, probably I have no idea. it's probably out back yeah. by the vice. Next, we're going to go ahead and pop our hole through here so we can put all of our things and such. Hopefully, I get it centered and right. Hopefully. Well, close enough. Okay, we'll get them all there, nice man. Shut up. Okay, hang on, hang on. They gotta go certain places because like, this one's. Fanciest mud truck out there for the first day. This will be something and rolled it over. Like, this is all cool stuff we're doing, but it's not gonna last long. It really isn't. Those are gonna get filled with mud before we get to use them. Yep, I'm gonna cut some of my fingers off. This also has a cool little feature. Ooh, that one barely deep enough. Barely. Ouch. We got a voltmeter on there to tell us how much voltage is in our batteries. Guide it out, trying to strip it. Shit. Another cracker. Alright, 
That's tight. There it is, one multifunctional power panel doohickey mounted, yeah? Yep. This is what staying up on Amazon for too late, trying to figure out what you don't need, results in. Help. Now you done did it. It's stripped. Now you done did it. So these are only hand tight capable. They're all hand tightened. Owned and offed. We'll glue it in. All right. Done. Now I need to mount our inverter. Ooh. This might not fit. Maybe. Water squirter room. I think it's wider. Just another return. Thick three. Negative. Oh, he fit. Take the pumpkin cap off. We gonna stretch out the toolbox. I'll get it back out so we can mount it. If it fits, it ships. <laughs> How are we gonna I get? I just shipped my pants. <laughs> like I just shipped myself. Is it in the right way? Turn it around. Oh, that's about the only way it can go. Yep. Just a good doink. All kinds of apparatus here. Things and stuff. I don't know what the heck that is. Oh, that's a clip for the spray heat. Uh oh. I forgot that. Yeah, I kind of need the cap on so it doesn't fill the whole toolbox up. Doink. Over here, we'll uh, put the uh, drainy cap on it permanently. I should just like weld it shut. There we go. How are you doing? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta figure out how to make this thing not move in. You bolt and straps? I should have got a strap kit. Or, or we get some of those lawnmower, um, you know, the holdy down things. No. And like what's hanging up over here. And we drill holes and rivet them over here and over here. That'll keep it from moving. Okay. We just can't use Ed's. So we got the inverter mounted inside the toolbox. Aaron, you want to show them? Hopefully they can see. I can see it pretty well. Yeah, it's nice and level, riveted in place. And now I've got this plug here. The fancy boxes. I'm going to put it here in the garbage. Dang. It's got some fancy screws. And then we're going to rivet it. Um, and what this does allows us to plug in our truck, everything on board, charge up, like I was mentioning to the trickle charger without having to run wires outside the toolbox, run wires everywhere on the truck. So we're gonna stick that right here also. Maybe like right down here, what do you think? Down there somewhere? Yeah, that'd work. Well, the right cell's gonna be right here too, so we can't go. We can't go, go right, right above it. 12, it's gotta be 12 inches or higher. We can probably just go right there. That'd be good. Yeah. So we need to measure be further enough, far enough over this way so it doesn't hit those plugs. We probably don't have any. Nope. In there, Bruce. Huh? Yeah, I'll find some. All right. So right here, guys, we're mounting the um, battery maintainer, battery charger. Um, and basically, this is going to plug into our plug that goes out here. And then we've got the battery wires that go right there to plug the battery and charge it. Find this bottom here. for his battery tender. Yeah, I know, but battery tender is a name. There it is. No slippy, no more. 
So folks, we've got going on here, we got some of our lawnmower straps that the lawnmowers get shipped in on um, right here to hold the tank down. It doesn't keep it from moving, but it's gonna be full of water almost all the time. I'm not planning on letting it get very low. So um, instead of using this huge hose and letting it, you know, Run make a for, mess make a mess and run free um what i'm gonna do is just use this hose right here to run to the front of the truck for the windshield wipers when we were at Royal king last night we bought some um, spray nozzles um they're kind of like a fan spray pattern we're gonna mount those on the windshield or the cowling of the truck to keep the windshield pounding with water the whole time we're out uh mud whomping out at the mud hole so um we're gonna have one t come over here to the wand so we can have it on the back of the truck for spraying down whatever we need to spray down um, but I'm gonna have like a little slinky or accordion, accordion, style, accordion style hose. It's just gonna chill right here um, with this wand on it. I'm probably gonna shorten this wand up a little bit too. Um, and then this hose is gonna run to the front of the truck for the sprayers. For the sprayer, yep. So we got everything shop backed it out of here pretty well. I got our wires tidied up over here out of the way for the um, trickle charger. And uh, yeah, the water pump the problem with it is whenever you plug it in it's always running and has a pressure switch that shuts it off so we need to put a um Freeway. i'm about to put an on and off switch somewhere for this or see what we need to do is probably put like a master power switch for this in the box here and then whenever we're so we, when we go to run, run the truck, turn it on, so it's always got pressure built. And then I'll put a, another valve, water valve, electronic water valve, right up where the windshield is. So whenever the valve's open, it's spraying. When it shuts off, this will build pressure and it'll shut itself off. So I'll figure something out. So I went out digging and we were trying to figure out what I needed to put in this empty spot here inside the toolbox. And I knew there was something else and I talked about running water meth on the truck and if you guys were here for the drag racing days shut up there hose you know that i was planning on running uh or i used to run water meth in the drag truck and i did like half mile race things like that so i found my old snow performance tank and brad's holding our pump and so on right? apparatus okay, think. and my wiring for 2016 don't look at it i'm a lot better now so this pump or this tank will sit down in there freaking perfect i guess yeah we want we want the nozzle right here where the uh, water comes out of being towards the back. So mount that baby right there and we can mount the pump. All right, let's take it all apart. Let's take it apart. <laughs> Try to call snow performance and get... Ooh, no, it's still full of methanol. Yeah, it probably should be full of methanol. That's all I mean. I didn't run windshield washer fluid like Montana. Okay, the shot's fired. Pew! <laughs> going, going, yee, yee. <laughs> So if we mount that, even if we mounted it like up here, it wouldn't be bad. That looks a lot better actually. But that right there, that right there, comes out straight to the pump. Or it needs to go, needs to go like this. Right there, just like that, straight to the pump. Yoink over to here to our solenoid, then out the door. Perfect. Cut all this crap off of here. I want to leave that on there just so I know what I've got going on. Yoink. So now this is going to be boost activated. Um, so I'll probably set it up on a boost pressure switch. I don't know if we're going to have this set up for the first event, but I definitely want to go ahead and get it put in here at least and it be inside the truck or in here. I don't know if this stuff even works anymore because it's... Corroded. corroded you can see it's corroded so i don't know we're gonna get it all screwed down in here anyways i guess we need to mount the tank first yeah well folks i got a lot done i got the uh snow performance water pump or methanol pump in here i've got the backflow uh like prevention valve mounted in here and then we've got the uh flow solenoid that basically that's water flow once the pump is on uh, tanks mounted and I went ahead and wired up our USB ports here our 12 volt charge ports and all that good stuff and it's turning out really freaking nice you guys are going to come out and see it in person at Redneck Yacht Club uh, Perry uh, Iron, Horse. Iron Horse Mud Park in Perry Florida I call it Perry because that's what I've always called it but it's Iron Horse Mud Ranch you guys have to come see the truck to see the attention to detail I may not be the best fabricator but I can really 
freaking wire some stuff up really nice. So, um, but yeah, Brad, you want to grab your phone charger? Because we got 12.6 volts in our battery. You want to oh. try it? Brad is the king of having a dead phone. Like, he'll have a full, fully charged beer, but he'll have a half empty phone. Oh, dang, even that lights up. Check that out. And these are high 2.1 amp. These aren't the little shitty one amp okay. plugs, too. Let's see if she works. Doom. There she is. Better than the little charger you got going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hang on. Clink. Off. Back on. Ooh, this won't stay nice that long, but it's definitely cool though. All right, I'm super excited. So there really isn't much else I can get done tonight. Um, I've put grommets right here in the back of the box for our uh, fuel hose. I'm sorry, our um, water hose to go for the windshield. So that's right there. Uh, I've got the correct size grommet so it'll seal up nice and neat. Our battery cables are gonna come out over here on this side, our positive and negative. So I got our grommets all set up right there. <laughs> and our grommet to go from the water meth uh, pump in here to go outside of the, the uh, toolbox. And we're gonna have a few miscellaneous wires coming in to the um, toolbox here to activate the uh, water methanol. And I guess that might be it. Um, yeah, because the water pump here is gonna be turned on with a master switch in the toolbox. So whenever we need to use the water pump, whenever we're not using the windshield, or just in general, we're gonna have a uh, switch to turn the water pump on because the way this pump works is once it has power it stays on until it builds pressure and then it has an automatic switch up here in the head of it that shuts it off so um we're gonna have a switch in here that turns it on and then i'm gonna i just ordered a normally closed water valve that we're gonna put underneath the cowling where the water spurs are gonna be at so that i whenever that opens the water pump will automatically turn on back here so we don't have a bunch of wires running in the box. So the only wires we're gonna have running from the cab back to this box are gonna be the wires to activate our water methanol. So the least amount of wires we have coming in and out of this box, the best, the more, the better that it can be self-contained, the better, obviously. Um, and we did get some wood put in here between the tank. And it might look a little tacky, but it doesn't go anywhere. And neither does our water tank down there. So, excuse me. So I'm kind of stoked about this. It may get muddy and just get tear up really quick, but it's in there. The wires are there. It's like nine bucks on Amazon, so we can have one in a day. Pretty quick to replace. So, yeah, that, I don't think that switch is going to last long. No, probably not. It, it says it's for it's. Not water it says it's for a boat. It says marine. So I did order a little wiring rack here. This is going to be a freaking pimp. Can't wait. Uh, let's see if we can find anything else we can knock out of this box right quick. So there you have it guys. You've seen us rip all that stuff out of the flat and we didn't need. This is going to be a tedious upload process of every little thing we're doing. Kind of like you do with seeing the cab over. Which by the way, everyone always asks on every video. And I literally tell everybody on every video, the cab over, we're waiting for the engine rebuild kit to show up. It's a very expensive kit and we're working with a company to uh, sponsor it to us. Basically help us out and bringing this thing back to life. So please be patient. I want to get it done. You have no idea. I really want to get it done. But while we're waiting, we're focusing on getting the flatbed done so we can make it to Iron Horse Mud Ranch in Perry, Florida on March 5th. So um, toolbox is pretty much 90% done. I just hopped on Amazon and ordered a um, relay box. It's full of like four fuses and four relays so I can put relays and fuses on the water pumps and everything in here so we're not gonna be burning anything up, burning a truck down, lighting out a fire, anything like that. And I found this box of goodies um, out in my trailer of just old stuff from fittings and push locks to little LED reverse lights. So maybe I can find something good in there. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. Smash the like button. Drop a comment down below and let me know if you guys see anything you know, like that I did or if you guys are enjoying the wiring or anything like that go to brucewilsonshop.com grab your merch grab your douche juice diesel fuel additive from industrial injection and all the other good stuff and we'll start keychains we do have a will it start coming at you guys this week I'm not gonna tell you what it is just be excited for it. it's happening so catch you guys later smash the subscribe button please